Okay, so the easiest way I find to get to Classroom is just to type in classroom.google.com. This will land you on the home page of Google Classroom. And so you can see up on the top left hand side here, there's a menu that drops down. If you click on that, you can see your classes. All of your Google Classrooms also have their own calendar. So we can click on this. And this calendar is based on the classes that I have. And so I will set later on a due date for an assessment task. And then I'll show you in here how it appears in the calendar. You also have a to-do list. The to-do list, once you've assigned assessment tasks and things to the students, once they start to submit them, it'll come up in your to-do list as things that you need to provide feedback on or assessments you need to mark, uh, or it might be classwork that students have submitted. Those types of things will appear in here. And once you've reviewed them, they'll appear here on the right-hand one. So this is things you haven't looked at yet, and these are things that you have. And you can filter it here by class. So if I just want my demo class, it'll filter it. Or if I just want my copy of Google Apps for Education class, that is also there. Going back to the menu, you can also just jump straight to your classes here. I can have a look at my archive classes or have a look at settings. Now the settings here are for me. So here's my profile settings, my account settings if I want to change my password. Now these are for Google Classroom now, where it is your email. So do you want to receive email notifications from your classrooms? And if so, for what? Do you want to be notified every time there's a comment? Or if there's a comment that actually mentions you, if it's a private comment on your work, or on work that's kind of addressed to you? Uh, for classes you teach, do you want to be notified when there's a late submission? When a student resubmits work? If there's an invitation to co-teach or schedule a post is actually published or fails to publish, would you like to be notified via email for that? Now further down here, you can also turn on mobile notifications on or off for classes. So if I turn that down, now we're doing it specific for each class. So if I only want notifications for my demo class and not for my copy of Google One, then I can click that and I do not need it. So there are your settings. Let's go back to our classes homepage and I'll just show you how to create your new class. So up in the top right hand corner you have the plus button. Click that and this is how you join or create a class. Now today we're going to just be focusing on creating a class. So you provide the name that's required. So test one, what section. So let's say this is for secondary. It could be for geography and then you might say that this is going to be in room k3 okay now you might call your class you know year 9 geography or something if you like so that's what i'm going to do for now okay so here is the class that i just created you can see it comes up with the test one the secondary it tells me how many students are in there the class has the tile here has three buttons if i click that i can move my class i can edit the class so give it a new name if i want to i can copy a class so if i just finished a year nine geography class at the end of the year, I could copy the class and it will make a copy of all the posts that are in there and they'll be set up as uh, draft posts and all the students will be removed, but I'll have everything ready to go again for my next year. And then I can also archive my class so that it doesn't appear on this tiled section. You'll note down here, you can also have a look at the folder that is created. So if I click here, it'll open up Drive and if you see the navigation here, it's in my drive, classroom, and then this is my class, test one secondary. Now, as I post things into that class, if they have a topic, then the topic will get a folder and then all the posts will appear underneath it. And I'll come back here and show you that later. And you also have your grade book. So you can click there and that will open up your grade book. But at this point, because there's no people in here and there's no grades that have been submitted, there's no grade book for this class. But let's just enter the classroom now. So once you're in the class, you'll see these four tabs at the top. There's the stream. And the stream is for when you want to just make announcements to your students, or maybe you want to have a bit of a chat with them, or a discussion that you're going to use technology rather than a face-to-face -face discussion. You can do that in your stream. Your classwork, 
And then your classwork is where you can create assignments and questions. You can use topics to organize classwork into modules or units, and you can move your things up and down. And so we're gonna create something here in just a moment. But next we'll have a look at people. This is where you'll have a list of your teachers who are there and also your students. Now at this point, you'll have no one in your class because you just created it. And then finally, you have your grades along the top. So let's go back to the stream. The other thing you'll notice here in the stream is that you have your class code. And you can click this button and it will make it a nice big code. And this is the code the students need to join your class if you do not invite them individually. So you can, on the first lesson with your class, just say, okay, class, I want you to go to Google Classroom. So classroom.google.com. They go there, they click join class rather than create class, they click join class. They enter this code and then they'll get listed in to this classroom for you. The other thing you can do on the right here is that you can select a theme. And so I said that this was a geography class, for example. So maybe something more like um, English history might work for me. And so here we go. This is kind of more like geography. Or this one. Let's go with that one. And set as a class theme. And you'll see now that the picture at the background has just changed. You can also upload your own photo for that. And there's a drop down here as well that gives you your further information about this classroom. Down here is where you're going to share something. So if I click here, I'll now be led to creating a post. And so I can say, hi everyone, welcome to the test one classroom, introduce yourself. Okay, and here at the top, you can see which class it's in. Now I can choose to send this to more classes if I like. So I can do a single post that will go to you know, all of my classes or to two of my classes or just a selection of them. It doesn't matter. The thing about this though, if you select more than one class, then you can't then change students. So if I click here, you'll see that has changed and is now gray and I can't click on it. But if I click that, I can then click on my student drop down. The student drop down allows me to make this not for all students, but if I had students in this class, I could then select individual students that this post would go to. And I'll come back and show you that in just a second. So let's not post this. Let's jump over to people and let's start by inviting students. So another way that you can get your students to join your class is just in here under people to click this little plus for students and then you can invite them. So all I did there was type in the names of the students and click the invite button. And now I have my students in here and you can see that they're gray because until they actually accept it, then they're not actually in the class. And now you can see that once the student accepts the invite, that they are now in my classroom as a student. And so now when I go to stream and I go to post something, you see here the drop down, I can select that I only wanted to go to one student not to all of them, and I can say, okay. And if you like, you can attach things via link. You can put in a video from YouTube, you can insert things from Drive or attach things. So if you click attach, it'll ask you to upload something from your computer or from Drive. If you click from Drive, it'll take you straight to Drive. This will allow you to search YouTube or to just insert the URL. And this is for your link and so you have to paste the link in here and that will then add the link at the bottom now when you're posting this you can just click post if you like and it will post it immediately or you can click this drop down and you can schedule the post so that it will occur on the first day of school for example so i can go here and let's say school is going to start on the 3rd of september or something 8 a.m i can click schedule otherwise i could also just save it as a draft and then i can come back and edit it later and post it or schedule it whenever I like. Once it's saved as a draft, you'll see here that it says saved announcements. You click there and there it is. As I can delete it. If I click on it, it'll come up and then I can click post and it'll be posted immediately into all of our streams. And so now that one student will see that post in their Google Classroom and then you can see people can comment on this Google Classroom. Next, we move over to classwork and let's create here you can create an assignment a quiz a question it can just be material or you can repost posts that you already have or you can create some topics i'm going to start by creating some topics okay and so in geography let's just say there's navigation and i also want a topic that's called north america 
And so here I have two topics, and obviously I can put more topics in. If I go to these three buttons, I can move this up to the top. And so now you can see they swapped. The other things you can do with this are you can rename it, delete it, or you can copy the link to it. And if you copy the link, you can then share that in an email with your students, for example, say go to this topic. And that will then take them, if I click on the topic, to any posts that are just in that topic. And you can see that you can filter by topic down the left-hand side of your menu. Finally, you can then also create a uh, assignments. When you want to create an assignment, it's going to be very similar to creating material. Just think of the two as material is like classwork type things that you're going to be sharing with the students, whereas an assignment is something that you might actually grade. So let's make it an assignment. Give the assignment a title. You can here provide students with any instructions. You then have points down here. Because it's an assignment, you can choose what it's going to be graded out of or if it's going to be ungraded. So here I might say, okay, this has actually only got you know, 10 marks in it. So that's what I'm going to do. You then set a due date. So let's have a look. Let's make this due in a few days on Monday. And you can set the time here. It defaults to midnight, but you could make it by 3 p.m. if you wanted to. And then that's saved. And here it currently has no topic. So I can click this. I can create a new topic if I want. You could go into navigation or you can go into North America. I'm going to put it in navigation today. I can attach things. I can find something from Drive. So if I click on Drive, and let's say I want to use this PowerPoint. Okay, now that's there. And you'll notice that once you put something in from Drive, particularly if it's a Google type document, so a Google Slides or Google Docs, or Google Sheets, etc., you'll have these options. So here it says students can view the file. So remembering our settings for the document, that means that the students will be able to have a look at it but not be able to edit it. You can make it so the students can edit that file. And so all those students can be given access to that document, the original document. Or you can choose, and this is the one I use most often, to make a copy for each student. And so now every student in the class is going to get a copy of these slides for their work. I can also go here and find a video and add it. And so there that comes up. You'll see here, I'm not making copies of it. It's just really a link to that video for your students. If you want to put in a website link as well, you could do that. So I could send them to Teachers PD. And so there's the link. So now I have a document, a video, some slides, um, a website link. And if you want, you could also attach a document. So let's upload something from the computer. And here for my PDF, again, students can view the file. They can edit it or they can each get their own copy of it. Now these ones only need to view that file, so I'm going to leave it in view only. And then I can assign it. Now remembering at the top here, I can select individual students, or I could post it across multiple classrooms at the same time. So finally down here on this, again you can schedule it, you can draft it or assign it. Let's assign it. Now if I have multiple things under navigation, let's quickly create another assignment. Now straight away you'll notice that this actually does not have a topic, so I need to give it one. So I can edit it and quickly just say, oops, forgot to put you into navigation. Click save. And once it's in navigation, again, I can move these up and down so that they're in the order that I like. One tip that I will give you is I actually like to create a topic that says today's work. And in today's work, I would post today's work because you can put things. So let's say we're going to work on get this done today. I can quickly edit this and move it into today's work. And that's going to be at the top of all my topics so it's easy for my students to find every day what they actually have to do and so you can set this up as a really simple way of when the students enter your classroom they can easily find what they're going to do you can have do this first you can give this you know, really clear titles of the order in which it should be done and it allows you to really help make sure that your students are spending more time on their class work and on their class tasks so that's creating tasks now if i go back to drive now you'll see here that I now have folders okay so my templates do not edit that but skills work and get this done so they're the posts names and if I open them I have the students name and then a copy of that document for them and the same here skills work students name and this is all the ones that the students have their own copy of if they're just viewing or editing the original file it stays where it was so that's just a nice 
quick, easy way if you want to see all the kids' documents at once and scroll through them, you can do it there. You can also do it from Classroom, but that's a simple way there. If I go over here to People, from within here, I can email particular students. I just click on the three buttons and I can click Email Student, uh, or I can click All the Students and email all the students at once. And now too, if I click on Grades, you'll see that my two assessment tasks that I've created are now here. Because the students haven't submitted anything and I haven't graded it, there's no marks here. But once I do that, the marks will appear in here and I can see all the work for that subject. And here I can sort by first or last name, these three dots here. So I can edit the task or the post or I can delete it. And then once people have done things and submitted it, I can return all. But I'll show you that in the next video. Finally, let's have a look at the settings for Classroom. So these are the settings for this particular classroom. So this is you know, where you find the class details, the name and the, its description, what classroom it's in, etc. You can find the course code in here again, and you can display it, copy, reset it, or disable it. So once you have all the students in there that you want, you can click disable, and then no, your current students won't be able to share that code with other students to have them join. And the next setting is really important. So in the stream and then on the class work on the stream, you have these different choices down here. So in the stream, students can post and comment. So that means that students can create the first post and they can also comment on current posts. Now, depending on what you particularly want, I normally only let my students comment, okay? You can also make it so the students can't do anything. They just have to you know, go there and read and they're consumers, but I want them to contribute. Uh, so depending on what you're doing, you could leave it on post and comment or you can make it so they can only comment on a post that you've already put. And then here you can see on the classwork on the stream has a condensed notification, but I could also hide the notification or show attachments and the details in the stream so that the kids don't have to necessarily click into it to get those details that they're after. Choose whether or not you want to be able to see items you've deleted as well. If you want to see them, you can then restore them. So you could choose to turn that on or to turn that off. Down here for grade calculation, so this is when it comes to your grade book. So you can choose a grading system, so there's no overall grade, or I can click this and say there's total points, or they're weighted by category. So if I choose total points, okay, I can show overall grade to the student if I want to, or if I want to do weighted by grade category, then I have to add grade categories down here, and they need to add up to 100%. So if I click on that, you can make the grade category a test, and that it's worth 30%, and then add another one, and it tells you how much is remaining down there, so let's make this a research, 40%, and another one, group project, and that can be worth 30% too, and there you go, it adds up to 100%. Personally, I prefer to use the total points, and so I do that, I click save, and so the overall grade is here, and whatever I give them as their mark appears here. The last thing I want to show you is how to create a quiz or a question. So you can click question and then you can ask a question, give some instructions. You can have these as categorized, you can put points on it, etc. You can choose whether it's short answer or multiple choice. And so you can put the options in here. You can say that the students can see the class summary at the end or not. And this is kind of like putting in a single question Google form for your class. Your other option is that you can create a quiz and so here you're going to create a Google form and then it's going to be linked with your classroom so all the grades from the form will come into your grade book in classroom you give it a title some instructions you can choose how many points it's worth choose a category if it fits a category and then once you click assign you need to you'll need to click here and actually create that Google form as a quiz so you click there it will launch Google Forms and you create your quiz in Google Forms, and that quiz is linked to your classroom. So that's your introduction to the front end, the setting up and getting things established for Google Classroom, how to post things in the stream, how to put in your classwork. And you'll see here that the assignments appear in the stream and they can click there and go to it, or they can go here to classwork and they can click it here. When they click there, it drops down, they get all the information. I get told whether or not they've actually submitted it to me and if they want to view the assignment click there and view the assignment this is where you see the students work there and i can start to give grades to them and stuff and i'll show you more from this end later yeah.